Hey, how you doing everyone? Welcome back to Big Frog's 4x4. Today I'm going to show you how to put upper and lower ball joints in a Jeep Cherokee with a cheap Harbor Freight press. You're going to want to start off by removing your brake caliper. It's a 12 millimeter. Kind of put that up out of the way. I'm going to use a bungee cord and tie that up. Remove the rotor. Now next, I like to remove my uh, drag link over here on this side, and that way I can move this easily back and forth. Whenever it comes time to taking your bolts out. And instead of needle nose pliers, you just want to bend your cotter pin back straight. Get up underneath there. Now you definitely want to have extra cotter pins on hand. So when you pick up your parts, your ball joints, whatever else you're doing in here, make sure you get a new cotter pin for here. You don't want to reuse this old one. I like these Pittsburgh needle nose pliers because they're cheap and I'm not worried about messing them up. If I do, I just bend them back. But Usually that can get them out. If that doesn't work, it might be easier to break this end off so they're flush with the bolt and then you can hit it out or soak it down with the oil and hit it out. If that doesn't work, you can grab a hold of it. If you can get it out just, in, just long enough to get needle nose pliers on it or uh, vice grips on it, you can grab a hold and work it out with a set of vice grips. Next, you want to remove your nut, and that'll be a 19 or a 3 quarter. All right, the best way without messing up your boot and your joint here to get this loose is smack it nice, good smack, hard hits with a hammer. Sometimes you need like a pound and a half or two pound hammer. You might need something a little bit bigger and you just need to vibrate that loose. All there is to it. Now, if you're not very good at swinging a hammer, you can always leave the nut on the end of this. That way, in case you miss, you don't miss, you don't mess up your threads. Plus, that'll keep it from falling all the way out. Next, you're going to want to remove the three retaining bolts for your wheel bearing. And you will take that and the axle all out as one unit. And that way you can get the press in to press these out. So this whole knuckle has to come off. So we need to get this out. They are a 13 millimeter 12 point socket. That's the only thing you'll be able to use on them. 13 millimeter 12 point. And you're going to want it in a half inch with a long handle. Because the chances are these are going to be really tight. It'll help if you lube up the threads a little bit and spray it down a little bit of lube. These have been out before about two years ago when we put U-joints in the front and we put new wheel bearings in. So they, these shouldn't be too bad, but I've seen these pressed in and very tight and hard to get out. You may have to either put a junk socket on here with an air hammer and beat the joint, the, the axle shaft and everything out, the wheel bearing unit out. They also make an air hammer attachment that slides in the air hammer. It's a cup that sits over top that will hit on the bolt then and vibrate and knock them out. If, you're, you, if your wheel bearing's junk, you can also smack the back of the wheel bearing with a hammer and try to work it out that way as well. Do not hit the wheel bearing unless you plan on replacing it. There's three of these. And this is why I took the knuckle off, so that this all can be moved out of the way. You have all this extra room. <clears throat> to break these free, I'm using a 24-inch Craftsman half-inch ratchet. But, like I said, these were just out about two years ago, so they weren't too terribly bad. 
All right, then you just want to do the last one on the other side. Like I said, this was just out two years ago and everything was cleaned up. So really, it's not going to take much. See, it's already starting to come out. When this gets put back together this time, we'll clean it all up. I didn't have any antices at the time when I did this. And I was in a hurry. My daughter was moving to Texas. So it was a hurry. We slapped it together, got new wheel bearings, and we got the uh, new U-joints put in it. So now, this time, now that I have a little extra time, I'm going to antices that all up. I put it back together. I'm going to remove these bolts the rest of the way. All right, once you have all the bolts out, you want to turn this straight. And kind of wiggle that out. Now, back here at the back, you want to support the axle. With your other hand, try to support that as much as you can as you pull that out. You don't want that to drag, especially on the long side of the axle. You don't want that to drag through the dirt any more than it has to. Now we can get in and do our bolts and nuts and stuff for the knuckle. I'm going to do my best not to get in the way of the camera so you can see everything that's going on, but there may be some times I just can't help but be in the way. But there again, it's the same as the other joint. You're steering that you want to just make sure these cotter pins are bent straight. I got a feeling these are going to come out a little bit harder than the other ones. That one's not too bad the way it looks. Yeah, that one we can kind of tap out most of the way. Then I'll come over here and do the same thing. Put the needle nose pliers in there and I'll just kind of tap the needle nose pliers and so that it works that all the way out. There's that one. And you don't reuse these, so don't worry about messing them up. The lower one is always the hardest. I'll snap that one off. I try to tap it to try to get the head of it out a little bit, but that one isn't working. If you hold it with the needle nose pliers, sometimes you can hold it a little bit straighter without bending and get it to go. There we go. Now if you can see it, it's kind of working its way out now. Now, if you cannot get these out, you can shear them off, break them off where you can get a socket over top. And if you can use an impact or a large ratchet and start cranking these, it'll actually shear off the roll pin now, or the cotter pin. If you do that, it's probably going to mess all the threads up on both of your bolts, whichever one you have to shear off with the bolt. But if you're replacing the uh, ball joints anyways, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if you screw them up or not. Now the size of your nuts are gonna depend on if they've ever been replaced before or if they're stock. The uh, passenger side had been replaced before and I believe it was a 22 millimeter. This one was replaced and it looks like, uh, that's an inch and an eighth. It's loose on there, so it's probably around like a 26, 27 millimeter. Let's see, no, it'd be like a 28, 29 maybe. But an inch and an eighth will work. All right, that gone and I did it again. I took this off and forgot to hit the record button. So, I'm going to show you here. I'll set it back into place. It goes on like this. 
And when it's on there and you have your bolts off, you can leave one of your nuts loose, and that way it doesn't drop. But I usually hold this steady with my hand up here at the top. And then I take the hammer and hit it a few hits back and forth, top and bottom. I mean, you really gotta hit it sometimes. You gotta really put some force onto the hammer, and then eventually, it'll knock it loose from the taper. It just takes vibration to get those loose. And you don't wanna be using a framing hammer, you wanna to wanna to use a nice heavy ball peen hammer. You got a set of these at like 20 bucks at Harbor Freight. Use it for years, see I missed a few times, and still holds up great. Now for the fun part, getting the ball joints out. As you can see, I had to modify this Harbor Freight press because China. When trying to use it, it just kept spreading apart. And even still, if you can look at it close enough, it's still bent down some, even with the gussets that I added to it. I welded them on, it's still spreading apart, both upper and lowers. This whole frame in here, this section here, bends. So definitely, I'd say I got my money's worth out of it, but not top quality. If you're gonna do more than one set of ball joints or if you're working on an old car and they're pressed in and they're rusted in tight, might want to rent one of these if you're only gonna be using it once or buy a good quality OTC with the adapters for your specific vehicle. For this application, working on the Jeep, I had to make my own piece of pipe for doing the one ball joint, had to cut my own piece of pipe, and then kind of, I don't know, we'll say make it work type deal, but it is doable, and we'll show you how. So this is the part where my piece of pipe that I cut comes into play. You wanna use this cup with the Harbor Freight, and the medium sized cup, the, the, this plate in a medium sized cup. And you gotta set that down over top, get as much of that dirt off. I was scraping it with a screwdriver earlier. Get as much of that off as you can. You gotta set this into place. Put your piece of pipe into place. Now hopefully this goes as easy as the other side. It, it wasn't easy, but hopefully it, it isn't as bad as doing the other side. It isn't worse than the other side. And basically, you just start tightening it up. I get some tension on it. Oh, that's coming off. He said, if this thing wasn't bent, this wouldn't be as bad. But with the press being bent, it makes this more difficult to get everything lined up straight. All right, now I'm gonna get the ratchet on the top of that. All right, I get some tension on there and then I like to smack it, hit it. And each time you do that, you'll feel the tension come off. So put some tension on it and hit it. Reposition this, it wants to slide off.
He said, it's not ideal, but I can get the job done. I just hope it holds up long enough for me to get both of these done. Okay. There, finally, George Lewis. Ooh. Starting to press out. Now I'm going to have to reposition this piece of pipe so it slides up in there. So loosen it up. Alright, almost out. There it is. I said, not definitely not perfect, not the best way, but it gets it done. A press designed for doing this would be a whole lot better. Actually, pressing it out isn't too bad. So you want the uh, mount with the big hole on the bottom and you want the medium cup. Unfortunately it only has two cups so you don't have a lot of choice. Little PB blaster on there. And there again, I'm gonna just get tension on it. And then get some more tension on it. All right, you can see it's starting to move. I hope you can see it's starting to move. Each time you hit it, it makes it a little bit easier. And that one's out. I've seen people take uh, a, a sanding wheel and clean out over the sanding wheel, but I found from experience, not all ball joints are made 
to fit extremely tight. So if you take even the slightest amount of material off, the ball joint basically just slops in and out easily, or it doesn't press in very tight. So I like to just kind of take some sandpaper with my finger and clean all of this out with a piece of sandpaper, and that's it. I don't use any power tools to clean that all up. Just a little bit of sandpaper on your finger and clean the rust up. The ball joints I'm going to be installing are not made in China ball joints. I went with TRW because they're made in Spain and made in Canada. Why they're different places, I don't know. Different ball joint, different location. These fit a lot better. The only problem I found is the ball joint for the lower has a grease circ that's too big for the later model axle U-joint and axle size. The axle will hit your grease circ. So you actually have to swap them. This will not be able to be greased with a grease circ in it once it's installed, once your axle's in. Unless you can find somewhere that has a low profile 45 or 90 degree grease circ that can fit in it so it clears the axle. I don't know of anything that small. If you know of something, let me know. Post in the comments below. But I'll show you after I install this that you have to swap the uh, grease circs. So grease it before you put the axle in. In this TRW kit for the lower, it comes assembled like this with your boot, your cotter pin, and not everything all unscrewed on. This is the grease circ no matter how close and how far you screw it down. Your larger axle in the later model, model Cherokees will hit this grease circ. So you can take this grease circ out and take the straight grease circ from the top ball joint and screw it into here so you don't have to worry about anything getting into the hole. But it also comes with a snap ring that you do not use on this Cherokee because this does not press up far enough in the knuckle. It'll bottom out in the axle and doesn't give you the groove then to snap this on. It, it comes up somewhere around here. So you do not use this on this application. Because the, to the top one pushes down through and this one pushes up through, there is no way, once it's all bolted together, for this thing to come out. Alright, before you press this one in, remove your nut, the cotter pin, and the rubber boot off of it. You don't want to mess that up when you're trying to press it in. This one is the small cup, and it fits underneath here. Now, I actually had to grind down the inside edge of this one so that it would fit over top of that one. If you don't grind it down, as you can see, it doesn't quite fit. So I took a, the grinding wheel uh, and, and just basically a sanding wheel on, on the die grinder and tapered that whole thing so that it fits down over top. And that way I can put my cup with the hole on the bottom. Then I put this one on top. And that is only until you get it pressed in most of the way. And it helps if you wind the screw in. This will probably be the last time I'll be using this press because it's getting quite bent. And it's getting a little bit on the dangerous side. Okay, you want to try to get that started in as straight as possible. I also oil my threads on my uh, press here. That way it turns a little bit easier. And basically, you just crank it down. Watch it to make sure that press is in straight. If it starts to get crooked or cockeyed at all, you need to stop and reposition. It'll press into a point where it'll contact this cup, and then you're going to have to stop. Which you can feel it right there, it just gets hard. Now 
put this cup on. So I'll slide this back down here on top. This is not an easy thing to try to shuffle over and move all around. It doesn't have much further to go until it's fully seated now. You just go until the bottom of your ball joint is fully seated against the knuckle. Basically, I just take my fingernail. If I can't put it between there, and you look and make sure there's no gap, you're good to go. All right, loosen it all up, take it off. And there you can see, that's all the further that presses in. This is bottomed out, and that's all the further that presses in. So there's no way you're getting that C-clip on there. So this one, I'm just going to tap down with a hammer. I'm going to put a piece of steel across here. I'm just going to basically tap that into place with a hammer. And like I said, you go until that is seated all the way around. I'd show you the clearance issue with the axle, but I don't like sliding that axle in and out of that seal any more than I have to. But trust me, if you slide that in there, that axle, the U-joint axle part, was going to hit that grease circ. So this grease circ is a 5 16 And you need to seat that as far down as possible. Do not break it off in there because that's asking for another bad day. So I just kind of run it until I see it's fully seated in there and then stop. That way you don't break it off. There, fully seated and now it should clear the axle. Like I said, this has to be greased before you slide the axle in. And then just screw in your upper grease circ. All right, make sure you install your lower boot before putting your knuckle on. And you want to kind of twist and push that up over the edge until it comes contact with your stopper plate here. Your other one was already installed. Like I said, you grease it. I like to go until I can see the grease coming out the boot. Alright, I got grease squirting out over on this side of the boot. Now this one is kind of fixed into place, so I wash just for a little bit of swelling in the boot when I grease it.
in this case, just a little bit of grease there to squirt out down here at the bottom. Now we can reinstall our knuckle. Lower start first, just by a little bit, slide it up on. Now this boot down here is going to be pushing down on you, so you're going to have to push up on the knuckle and get your lower bolt started. I can just kind of work that nut up on by hand, and then we can get the upper one started. Like I said, tighten these by hand, not with an impact. You just need them snug. You don't need them overly tight. All right, the new socket size is inch and a quarter. And then you want to just, once it starts feeling snug, you turn it until you line a slot and a castle nut up with your hole for the cotter pin. Oh, went a little bit past. We'll come back just a little bit. All right. We get the lower cotter pin in. I took a wire brush, cleaned up all the rust in here, and applied anises. Now I'm going to slide the axle in. I put a fresh coat of oil over the splines and over the seal area of the axle. And I'm going to try my best to try to keep that centered in the axle tube. It's easier on this side than the other side with the long axle. I'll try to get it in the seal up there. There you go. She's seated in, now we just gotta get our bolts back in. Here, all we did was tighten up all through those bolts by hand, put the steering knuckle and everything back together, tighten the castle nut by hand, and then put your brand new cutter pin in. All you have to do now is basically put your rotor back on and your brake caliper and torque your lug nuts and everything on and you'll be done. All right, before I conclude this video, I wanted to show you a quick trick I learned about how to hold your caliper back into place while you're putting all your brake stuff all back together. I don't know if you ever worked on a car that this caused an issue with trying to get everything lined up on some cars. If you ever pull an axle nut off of a vehicle, that's what this is, and you replace an axle, keep your nut or take any other nut about this size and it makes a perfect spacer for your lug nut to hold your caliper back tight. And that way you can assemble all your brakes and this isn't going to wobble all over the place. Like I said, pretty much everything from there is the same way you took it apart. Uh, make sure your caliper uh, boots here, make sure that your pin slide and everything slide. Make sure that this is all cleaned up and you lube up your uh, pad slides. Pretty much everything else is what you've seen in my videos before, nothing new. If you need to see how to do brakes, I've done brakes on a Cherokee, I've done one on mine. This is my daughter's Jeep. So yeah, pretty much the same as any other video I've done when doing brakes. It's just reverse, putting everything back together. Make sure you torque your lug nuts on. Do not forget that because the last thing you want is your wheel to fall off going down the road, driving down the highway and your wheel passes you going down the highway. 
Not a good sign. Seen it happen. Seen cars that hit tires that came off of people's vehicles. Not pretty. It's like a huge bomb going off in the front of a car when it hits it. A tire going down the road at 65 miles an hour. So thanks for watching Big Frogs 4x4. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell down there if you want notified of every video as it comes out. And as always, God bless.